Um, so my name's Cass, it's short for Cassandra, and I was the UCLA Club Gymnastics Social Media Chair um, for 2018 and became president in 2019. Yes. So I've been on the club since um, freshman year. I never really thought I would continue doing gymnastics after, um, after high school because I just didn't think that I didn't think I would enjoy it. And I didn't think that gymnastics was a sport that I could really um, see myself doing long term or have fun doing. So I grew up in Hong Kong and um, the culture there is, I would say, remarkably different to America. Um, there was a lot of pressure, I'm sure everywhere, but in Hong Kong, it was a lot of pressure to compete and a lot of pressure to pretty much be at the top all the time. And I realized I didn't enjoy the culture and I didn't enjoy the competition aspect of it. I didn't like pushing myself towards greater heights for other people instead of competing for myself or competing for my own passion. So in high school, when like classes became really difficult and time consuming, I decided to quit. And when I went to UCLA, I walked past Open Gym. I saw our ex-president Avi there. I saw a bunch of um, UCLA Club Gymnastics members there and I just walked up to them and said hi. I didn't think that they would be so friendly. I was just nervous. I was just a really shy freshman and they were always super welcoming and treated me like like a second family. So they encouraged me to try out for the club and I met some other wonderful members like Naomi there at tryouts. So I would say my gymnastics journey has been just that's wonderful. I never, I truly never expected to find someone, some place that I could feel like I was at home at in the gym. And I found that at UCLA and I could never be more thankful for it. But yeah, that's, that's how it is. And now I've graduated and hopefully, um, I'm not sure if I will be continuing gymnastics in graduate school, but I believe that I will try to be active in the gymnastics community for as long as I possibly can be. Okay, I can go over a little story. Kess will be in it as well. Um, so I started gymnastics when I was five. And at that point, I was living in California. So I went through rec classes, um, finished level four. And then um, when I was about like seven, and then my mom was pretty much like, I don't want you to do competitive gymnastics. It's too much of a time commitment. And um, we think it stunts your growth, which may or may not be true, but I will note that I think all of us are on the shorter side. Um, so then I did kind of, I did private lessons for a year and then I moved to Canada and in Canada I did rec there, but rec is a little bit different in that here there's kind of four levels of rec and then you're in competitive. In Canada, it's more like two separate distinct systems. Um, so there were like harder rec levels. Um, so I did that for a few years. And then when I was in grade seven, I started training with Haley um, and for like more performance groups, um, which I also think is a Canadian. Oh, Haley, my ex-coach who was also on this podcast. And I think that's how we actually found it, um, which is very exciting. Um, and she's of course great. And that was really fun because doing that one, I had like a performance environment. So we did like acro, um, we did, I did like circus stuff for a while. Um, so I think I have like a more random collection of things that I've done, which has been very exciting. Um, I think I had like a very positive experience with gymnastics. Um, I only almost quit once when I cut the end of my finger off, but then I got back into it anyways. It's very hard to stay away from the gym, I think. Um, and yeah, I did performance gymnastics with Haley all the way through high school, which was nice. Haley's like a very supportive person and also was good because we weren't competitive. I was not training a ton of hours. It was just six hours a week and then um, potentially stuff on the performances on the weekend. Um, and it was like very fun team environment. Haley's
good about like pushing people to do new skills and working with um, adult gymnasts. So I think I had like a very positive coaching experience um, and a coaching experience that didn't put like a ton of pressure on me, which is really nice. But I also thought I was going to be done with gymnastics when I graduated high school. It's like, I think I'm done with this sport. I don't know. But then at UCLA, first week, went to enormous activities fair. And there were, you know, a thousand club booths all around. And I was a bit overwhelmed. And I ended up walking past the gymnastics one. So then I slowed down to talk to them. And Avi and Micah, who are both like Cass mentioned, Avi is, was an ex-president, were there, and they seemed very nice, and also I was feeling a bit overwhelmed with all the options and with coming to college, and gymnastics is nice because it's kind of familiar. All gyms are similar in some ways, and people all have similar interests to me, so I went to the meeting, and that's where I met Cass um, and a bunch of other people, which was very, like, nice, um, and everyone was nice, and we had things in common, and then I joined the team. Um, I did not think I was going to, but I mostly did it for the social aspect. But then through doing that, I realized how much I love gymnastics and I really miss it when I'm not doing it. And I like having that like workout space and having that space on campus, which is very, you know, very much a safe space. Like we are kind of a family. It's just really nice. It's just been really nice. Um, and like having that community at college was really helpful. Um, so then I was on the board as social chair for a year, then co-social chair the next year, and then co-captain this last year. And it's been great. I love this club. Um, I'm hoping to do gymnastics. After this, I'll be moving to the East Coast um, and in Cambridge, and there's uh, Cambridge City Gymnastics, I think. Um, there is a gymnastics club out there that we've met a couple people from because they come to Polly, which is our home meet. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to get involved through that. I'd really like to stay involved. And I really, I like that it seems like there's kind of a shift in the sport towards having um, adults actually do it and it not just being something that you do until you're 18 and then you stop. And that is my story. So I really, it's been really great to have this at UCLA and have this community. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan, um, and I'm going to be this year's upcoming president for UCLA Club Gymnastics. Um, I started gymnastics when I was six, and I was basically playing around on the monkey bars at school, and some of the parents watching recess saw me and told my mom, like, you have to sign this kid up for gymnastics. So, got signed up for a rec class, and then kind of, like, at that first practice, they kind of scouted me to get on to team. Um, and so in, in a matter of months, I was on team and then within one year was actually competing as a level four um, at age seven and then <clears throat> just competed for a couple of years, had a couple of coaching changes that were actually pretty difficult for me, lost a lot of my strength, flexibility and had to relearn a lot of skills over the next couple of years um, until when I was 12, I had like the coach who I had for the rest of my high school gymnastics experience. Um, competed three years of level 10 during my last three years of high school, but ended up getting really burnt out. And while well, I was able to learn a lot of skills and different things that um, I'm really proud of doing and a lot of skills I'm really proud of competing was ultimately in a very negative environment for about six years. Um, and I kind of lost sight of what I myself wanted in gymnastics and kind of replaced that with other people's expectations of me. And so it was pretty difficult for myself um, to keep going in the sport those last couple years of high school. Um, and then I was, as I was going through the whole college application process, um, considering if I wanted to do college gymnastics or not, um, I ended up injuring my ankle at our season opener meet in December, kind of around the same time I was getting all of my applications in. <clears throat> and that was really disappointing for me because it was on a new vault that I had finally mastered and was really proud of. Um, but went through a stage where I just completely burned out and was trying to come back for a meet in New York. But um, 
ended up just telling my parents, like, I can't do this the rest of the season, trying to balance, um, like, AP classes, college applications, gymnastics, and injury, and so quit the sport for the rest of my senior year and the summer, and then ended up getting into UCLA, which was, like, a really big breath of fresh air for me. Um, I was kind of able to escape from that negative environment that I was in and was able to reassess what I really wanted to do with the rest of my life after gymnastics. Um, didn't think I was ever going to do gymnastics again after high school until I got to UCLA and the campus was just very huge and very intimidating to me as I had come from a very small part-time homeschool program. So coming from a part-time homeschool program with a few hundred people K through 12 to this massive public school with what 30,000 undergraduates um, was kind of frightening to me at first and was kind of examining like what do I want to do at college and what groups can I fit into and then I saw the club gymnastics table at the enormous activities fair um, and learned that competitions weren't mandatory and that I could basically do what I wanted and set my own goals and so really my freshman year my only goals were just to like mess around in the gym and try to have fun with the sport again um but and i met a coach Hines, who um recruited me onto the southern california united team um so i competed for gym act my freshman year um competed pommel horse and high bar and we don't actually have a pommel horse in the gym at ucla so i went every other week to train pommel horse at a gym about an hour away um Hines was kind enough to pick me up um, but ended up doing pretty well during that season. No major mistakes on Palm Horse. High Bar was a different story that I will not talk about. Um, uh, but had a great time competing um, for Heinz for Southern California United and was able to experience um, a national competition in Maryland with the team, um, which was an absolute blast and was able to kind of find myself and what I wanted to do in gymnastics and was able to really take all of the pressure off of myself competing for other people and just really take a look at things and compete for myself and figure out skills that I wanted to compete that other people weren't forcing me to do. Um, and so I was able to just have a lot of fun with gymnastics. And um, then the COVID pandemic hit and I became co fundraising chair this past year of UCLA Club Gymnastics. Had a great time just doing Zoom workouts. It was a little disappointing not to go into the gym, but I think it brought the whole team closer together as we were able to be online together and find some outlet during the pandemic to still exercise and socialize. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this next year as president of UCLA Club Gymnastics. That's awesome. All right. Um, so I started gymnastics, or I'll preface that by I was a very hyperactive kid. And my parents were able to actually sign me up for a ton of different sports growing up when I was in elementary school and middle school. So I did recreational gymnastics once a week. I did dance once a week. I did soccer. I did softball. I tried out all the sports. Uh, we found out I wasn't very athletic, but I had fun trying. Um, and it wasn't really until middle school that I said, you know, in seventh and eighth grade that I really like dance and gymnastics best and I want to kind of do those. Um, and I wanted to join a team, but the gym that I was going for classes one day a week, you had to have a round off back handspring to join the team. And I didn't have that skill, so I wasn't able to join the team. And I was a little upset, but I said, let me try and get the skill. I started going twice a week in eighth grade. And I was 13 already um, and I still didn't get the skill. So when I was, uh, so towards the end of eighth grade, I actually found another gym that was close to me as well that allowed you to start at a lower level. So instead of starting at the typical USAG level four, I could do USA IGC uh, copper. So I just needed a round off. So I was able to join the team between going into ninth grade and I was 14 years old. I had never done formal gymnastics before. Um, it was more of running around and cartwheels. Um, and it was just amazing. I started practicing uh, three days a week. I loved it. 
the people I were practicing with were doing round effect, hamstring back falls, and I was doing cartwheel, cartwheel connection. Um, it was very, uh, I, I wasn't super proud of my skills, but I loved that I was able to do it. Um, and I ended up making a lot of progress. I went from doing really, really basics when I was 14 to doing a little bit more intermediate when I was 15. And then again, when I was 16, um, and then senior year of high school, so it was my fourth year or would have been my fourth year competing gymnastics, I injured my shoulder. Um, and it was very difficult for me because gymnastics was my outlet and I, I loved being able to work on different skills and not being able to do the things that I used to was challenging. Um, and I went through a lot of physical therapy. I went through uh, something called dry needling. I had various injections. I tried all these things. No one could figure out what was wrong with my shoulder. Um, and a whole year passed. And at that point, I had just gotten into UCLA. I was considering doing gymnastics in college previously, but with my shoulder, I kind of didn't know if I could continue. And when I actually got to UCLA, I still kind of had shoulder pain and I couldn't really quite find where I fit in most. And I was friends with people in my hall and I ended up joining a sorority, but I didn't really find those people that I just clicked with. And then I think I either found on Facebook or a social media post, something about club gymnastics tryouts. Um, and I reached out to Avi, who was the president. And I said, well, I can't do anything, but maybe I'll try out anyway. And I came to the tryouts and I remember I was like very, um, I, I was being very difficult because they were like, oh, you have to do a round of back handspring. And I was like, well, I can't do that because of my shoulder. Um, so they said, okay, can you do like something on bars? And I said, no, because of my shoulder. Um, and they ended up letting me just do like a front tuck or something like that. And then they said, oh, you're on the team. I was like, oh, cool. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna stay on the team or what I was gonna do. And once I started meeting other people there, it was just so amazing, the community and the support. And I found someone else who's still a good friend of mine today. His name's Constantine. Um, and we just bonded over injuries. It was like my second week at UCLA. And I finally felt like there was someone else that I could relate to that I didn't have to like, I wasn't really complaining, but he was also in constant pain and I didn't feel so alone. And I started getting really involved in gymnastics, the club and all the social activities. And I ended up becoming social chair at the end of my freshman year. I had a few more injuries. Um, and I ended up spending like a few months just not doing any gymnastics at all, just conditioning. And I actually was able to recover my shoulder and all of my other injuries. So that by the time sophomore year came around, I was back up in training and getting skills that I hadn't even done in high school. Um, I was also really, really lucky that I got to meet some awesome people while I was at UCLA that were on the NCAA team. Um, and some of them kind of took me in and they were like, oh, like, you're so cute. You're trying so hard. Well, we'll give you some pointers. And I actually got to practice with a few of them. I met some, some Olympians. It was like very, very cool. Um, and I really loved it. And my sophomore year, I think I was vice president of the club gymnastics team. And I, I really enjoyed, like I said, the, the whole uh, holistic aspects of being able to do leadership and organizational stuff, having the social life and the friends, having the, the physical outlet, and then being able to work on skills. And senior year, or I, I graduated in three years, so I'll jump from sophomore year to senior year sometimes. I'm not skipping a year. Um, but yeah, so my last year at UCLA, I was president of the club gymnastics team. It was amazing. We met so many awesome people. And I actually decided to get involved with the governing body organization called the NAIGC, which was the, the kind of the governing body that held nationals every year and that organized sanctioned competitions and regionals and all of that stuff. So it was really that my love for gymnastics and leadership and the gymnastics community sparked my interest in getting involved with the NAIGC. And then after college, I went on to continue working with them. Um, and still today, I work with the NAIGC and do a lot of stuff to continue expanding opportunities for everyone who's in college or in the adult community doing gymnastics. And it's really just amazing the way we're pushing the boundaries of the sport and breaking the stigma that only kids can do gymnastics. Um, so, so I love it. I'm not 
currently competing, I go to open gym or like a adult practice once to twice a week and I throw around some skills, but um, I, I love that I'm still part of the community and I still have such strong ties to all of my friends and all of my coaches and everyone else, so. That's awesome. Thank you all for, for sharing. It's, it's so interesting to hear like all your varied backgrounds that brought you to UCLA and how for like several of you, you mentioned it's like been a breath of fresh air to compete for college club versus like the private club. And I know all of you were, were or are in leadership at different times. And I also don't quite know the order, but th that doesn't really matter, but um, it's all in the last few years anyway. Um, but I think a lot of the listeners of my podcast may not necessarily be familiar with club gymnastics, not, not because it's, or college club gymnastics, not because it's so new, but I mean, it's, it's just pathways for adults doing gymnastics aren't talked about. Like in, in our culture, we really only talk about gymnastics, like during the Olympic years or more recently when gymnasts particularly from UCLA, go viral. <laughs> um, um, but I'm curious about how, how does the UCLA club work? Because I, I know that the NCAA team, I mean, they compete, what is it, like over 100 meets in a year or something crazy like that. But I might be wrong. I don't know if that's an exaggeration. But how does the, the club team work? It sounds like it's more of um, – much more relaxed and you're able to do as much as you can um, in that setting. And is it more of an open gym structure or are there coaches available to um, guide you? Okay, I can give a rough overview and then other people can jump in as they wish. Yeah, so club gymnastics is very open-ended. It really is what you make of it. Um, so we do have competitions. Anyone on our club can compete. Um, the only thing is you just have to register for the meets, which the club guides you through. That's like a big function of board is just kind of doing that kind of coordination, logistics stuff. Um, so within that, that is not a problem. Um, we all kind of work on whatever you want in the gym. It is kind of open gym structure. Recently, Club Gymnastics is a pretty new club because I think there's only been about five presidents, Jesse, Avi, Tammy, Kess, and then now Ryan. Um, so we're pretty new. It, I think it's gotten a little bit less open gym ish. Um, as I've gone through college, we have had a coach, um, a couple coaches actually, but at the same time, our coaching is never like everyone who comes must follow the coach around. It's very much if you want help or if you want a lesson plan from a coach, they are available to you. We've started doing more group conditioning, but it's always, you have the option not to do it. You can just come do whatever you want in the gym. And that's been really, I think an area in which having a lot of diverse experiences is very helpful because for example, Ryan is amazing, like such an amazing gymnast. And um, I can just ask Ryan if I'm like struggling with something like, hey, how do you do this? Um, and Ryan will know how to do it, which is so great. Um, and I think that's another thing where like having a good community is great because you like can ask literally anyone in the gym, hey, like, do you have any advice on this? And people are so willing to help you and to support you and cheer you on. And that's been really nice. So I'd say very flexible structure. Um, we do have group activities and we do try to make sure that we're doing things as a group and are helping each other achieve our goals, but super wide range of goals. Not everyone wants to compete. Um, competitions are also more casual than um, I think other sets of competitions. College students just seem a little more casual in general and it's just a very low stress environment. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with what you said, Naomi, um, about you kind of get out what you put in. Um, and just adding to that diversity, there's really people who come in from all different backgrounds. Some people who have done cheerleading or parkour or competitive gymnastics. And there are people who don't want to compete and just want to do an open gym and only work on floor or one event. And then there are people who are level nine competing who do every single event. And the really awesome thing about competitions is that the governing body, I'll keep referring to it, um, the NAIGC lets people compete anywhere from developmental, which is beginner, 
all the way level six, level seven, level eight, and level nine. So you have such a wide range of options and you can compete on any event you want. So it's not that you have to compete all four events or you can compete kind of floor and vault or bars and beam. Um, so that's really awesome. And adding to the coaching structure, Naomi hit upon something that actually was really awesome, especially when I was there, is that we could kind of coach each other to some extent. There was a coach present and you could utilize the coach. Um, but what there, when there wasn't, you could really just look over and ask someone else and say, hey, am I setting high enough in my back tuck? Um, it was just so supportive. And it was really, it really was diverse in a sense that when I uh, first started at club gymnastics, I was able to do a vault that the president Avi couldn't do. So I was giving her pointers on vault. And I said, all right, like, why don't you try a front handspring or a half on? And I was able to give her feedback where she was so much better than I was at floor. And she was doing like roundup back layout or roundup back answering back full. And she was giving me pointers on floor. And it was just so cool that we were at different levels on different events, but we were both able to kind of give each other feedback. Um, and yeah, it, it was really just such a diverse competition of athletes with different backgrounds that were working on different skills. Yeah, just to add to that, um, the NAIGC also offers other uh, options, I guess, for competing. So they have trampling and tumbling, if that's more your thing. And they also offer something called decathlon. So athletes can compete both um, male and female events, women and men's events. Um, so for me, I decided to just have fun my junior, sophomore, my sophomore year of college and just compete the decathlon even though I've never really done pommel horse or high bar or parallel bar before, but I had everyone around me cheering me on and it was really nice to just try something that I never thought I would be able to do or never have the opportunity to and also have fun while doing it. But it's nice that NAIGC offers um, this option for athletes and gymnasts who would like to expand their um, experiences into other disciplines. So I don't know how common it is the fact that UCLA has the NCAA team and the club team. How, how has that been like? Like I assume you all can't possibly practice at the same time. Like there wouldn't be enough equipment, but I'm sure you're aware of each other and maybe use the same space. Like, and how does it's really interesting that you have the club structure, which is comparatively new, and the focus is definitely on do what you want to do, whereas NCAA is much more structured. And I think it's pretty awesome that the university like kind of lets those two coexist. Um, so I'm wondering if you have any comments on, on, on why that works, because I think that, that seems to work really, really well. Yeah, I can go ahead and um, take a stab at this question. Um, I think part of the reason it works so well is that the NCA team obviously gets priority and they set their own practice times first and then club sports gets to set their practice times afterwards. So we're able to practice at completely different times of day. So I believe the NCA team trains pretty bright and early in the morning um, using Yates Gym in the John Wooden Center and then they head over to weight training. Whereas um, club gymnastics, we usually train pretty late in the evening, um, somewhere between like 7 to 11 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday typically, and then Saturdays are usually some time in the middle of the day after the NCAA and also rec classes are done with their practices. Um, but there is pretty good communication between like the president and Chris Waller, of course, as we do have to set up our meet in poly that occurs um, once a year. So we're in good communication with them um, regarding that type of stuff. But I'm sure that the previous presidents and captains will have more to offer on this question. So yeah, no, that, that sums it up really well, Ryan. I will say that we are very lucky. There's over 150 different club teams across the U.S. that practice club gymnastics, and I'm not sure the ratio, but a lot of them do not have access one, to an NCAA facility, and two, to a facility that's even on their campus. So we're incredibly lucky. I know so many different teammates or friends or people who go to different schools who they take a bus or they have to drive to a different facility, and it's anywhere from 10 minutes away to 45 minutes away. So we're very uh, privileged that we have it on campus and that our NCAA team lets us use the facility because there are actually some schools that they do have a 
NCAA gymnastics facility, but the team doesn't even let the club practice there. So um, we're, we're definitely lucky. Tammy, you were talking about your tryout for the club uh, team. Like, it's, it's really interesting the way you were describing how it works. I mean, it sounds like you don't necessarily have like absolute beginners who are just interested walk in. But I, the reason I'm asking is because I've had experiences like when I took gymnastics at Chelsea Piers in New York. I mean, they have a very long running adult gymnastics program but there's a lot of like sometimes the, the ebb and flow of beginners coming in and, and weaving out and it was hard to get them to be consistent because you can't, I mean, you, you try gymnastics for the first time or even several years away and you're going to be sore for like a week and that deters a lot of people from coming back. And so um, I don't think it was a problem at Chelsea Piers because they have that established program and structure but I think a lot of like around the country, just private gyms trying to set up adult gymnastics for the first time, they think because beginners will try it and then not really stay because they really, because it's, it's difficult and it takes um, time getting used, your body getting used to it. They'll think that the interest isn't there. Um, so I'm curious if um, like, Maybe you don't necessarily want absolute beginners, but there might be people who are athletic and other or similar activities and might be interested. Like, how do you, how do you, do you recruit or do you, do you just not, is it just a more of a natural like attraction of people that have already been gymnasts that, you know, make up your team? Um. I'll just give a brief overview. So when we have our enormous activities fair, we're, we're stationed with the rest of the club sports. So people who are naturally like more interested in um, sports or exercise, they will walk through that area. And if they're interested in gymnastics, tricking or related disciplines, they usually stop at our booth. But while we have a requirement that at tryouts you show a round of back handspring and a front tuck on the floor, we are mostly looking for if you can be safe in the gym so if we can see that you're able to do some skills and then you're able to ask for help or not attempt things that you, you can't do, we'll more than likely let you onto the team with the caveat that you be really careful and make sure that you ask um, other senior members if you need help with anything. We have several members who are more focused on tricking or uh, just like strength training and not, not especially want to be there for the tumbling. So while we know that they're more like athletically inclined and more interested in sports and exercise, we also know that they'll be safe in the gym and that's why we would let them onto the team. I would, yes, I would also just add that um, they're, so as Kes said, we're not super designed as like a complete entry point to gymnastics, which in some ways is um, unfortunate. Like we would love to have more people involved, but sadly we just don't have the like abilities to safely teach people uh, skills and nor do we want the liability for that. Um, but Wooden also offers rack classes, classes for adults. So for example, my co-captain, Emily, um, from this year, uh, that is, she comes from a dance background, but she hadn't done gymnastics before college and she knew it was something she wanted to do. So she took rep classes for a semester, got her round up back handspring and then joined the club. So it's definitely, there are avenues, but it's not, you do have to be a little bit more committed because you will have to sign up for a class and pay for a class and attend that before being able to switch. Um, I think it would be great if it was easier for adults to get into gymnastics. And I hope that in the future, um, there are more opportunities for that. There are definitely people from different backgrounds, which is very nice. And as Kef said, it's like mostly about like, can you be safe in the gym? Um, but yes, we are mainly composed of people who have some experience in gymnastics or gymnastics adjacent related, you know, cheer, rhythmic, acro, tricking, um, all of those sort TNT, all of those sorts of areas or diving actually is another big one. Oh, that's super interesting. <laughs> so I actually have some experience creating or forming different uh, club gymnastics teams outside of UCLA. So 
Um, there, there was a little bit slightly different procedure and we actually were able to, depending on the community, um, I think there are ways that you could incorporate brand new beginners. It is difficult at UCLA because it's affiliated with the institution and there's liabilities and not a formal consistent coach that comes every single practice, at least when I was there. Um, but for example, even just recently, since I would say about March, as things got a little bit better with the COVID situation and I was back home in New Jersey, I worked with uh, an old coach that I had growing up to create, uh, we did Northern New Jersey adult gymnasts. We made this group and there's about 10 different, maybe 12 different people who alternate um, and maybe like five to six come per practice. But we just created this group using the Facebook just like fine wine adult gymnastics. So it's a Facebook group that anyone who does adult gymnastics can join. And I saw that there were some people posting and asking, you know, is there any gym in New Jersey that I can do adult gymnastics? So I ended up working with this coach and messaging a bunch of people who I saw were in New Jersey. And we formed this group and we have people come in who are brand new beginners that we show, we teach them how to do a handstand and how to do like straight jumps and tuck jumps and all that stuff on a trampoline. Um, and then they have, we have people who come in who competed at Rutgers or other schools and who just want to practice their skills. Um, so we have that really diverse range. And then when I was in grad school, actually, I also tried to start a club there. Um, and we had a lot of complications because COVID hit midway through. But before that, we actually were on track to start a club. And we, again, had people who were anywhere from competitive to brand new beginner who really you know, didn't really know how to do handstands and cartwheels that we were teaching that sort of stuff too, because we had access to a uh, facility with coaches that taught people from the very beginner level. So I, I think it definitely varies. It's harder when you're working with a university, but there are a lot of adult uh, community gymnastics clubs or just groups that do have people who are brand new beginners and do teach them. So it's really cool that there is uh, such diversity. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Tammy. I didn't realize that you had continued, uh, you know, doing that after college. Uh, I, I know we only have 15 minutes left, so I want to be cognizant of the time. And um, I just want to ask one more or two part question and kind of go around again as you wrap up and you can, you know, answer all or part of it as you wish. And um, like on this podcast, I always love asking like theoretical questions or opinion based questions. So um, firstly, like, what do you think about where adult gymnastics like in the US is headed? Like, you know, our entire new women's Olympic team is all over 18, which is so amazing. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes for um, not just a longevity, but accessibility. Cause even though, you know, Chelsea Bemmel didn't make, you know, the team, I think there's still a lot of, um, I think well, there, are, there, are more, there are more issues than just sports at play in terms of why it's not more widely known or uh, why people don't do it more as adults. Like I was, I was like very low level competitive when I was doing it in Virginia 10 years ago. And, um, but even I got pushed back because I was working and I, I literally saved up my paid time off for any time I was out of the office. Like it's mine, I should be able to do it. That's how I made summer practices my first level four year because we had it in the morning. And I got like this like, anytime like I did anything wrong at work, it was always like, oh, it's because of gymnastics. I'm like, no, maybe some, maybe I just like made a mistake like most people who aren't doing gymnastics also do. But it was kind of frowned upon to do, to have a, a life that wasn't at that time focused on like raising a family or kids. Like why, why do you need to leave the office early? And I feel like the fact that now somebody like Chelsea can show that she's yes, a mom and a wife and she's already gone to the mountaintop and now she still wants to do it. And even she got pushed back. Like why, why don't you just focus on being a mom? Um, but I think the I think it does look better. Uh, so again, like I, I went off on a tangent, but my question is like, what do you think about where the potential for adult gymnastics is headed? And also, um, 
having already experienced both like private club gymnastics and college club gymnastics and how uh, more how much more refreshing college club gymnastics is like if you were like post graduation like you've already started to do Tammy like just designing your own ideal adult gymnastics program assuming like access to equipment and gym was already there like how would you set it up so that more adults who like both beginners and returners were able to come back and be consistent and have fun <laughs> answer any or all of that or none of that or just your final thoughts it's like no pressure i'm just i love i just love hearing what other people think about like where gymnastics is going I think just coming from a bit more of a competitive background, we are really seeing gymnastics as a whole, not just adult gymnastics, but even elite gymnastics, you know, growing up in a private club, competitive gymnastics, it's all really being revolutionized here, especially as we um, kind of take on this role of making the sport a much more positive environment. And that comes not just from like a mental, emotional perspective of making the sport more positive but even from a physical perspective as well it is super inspiring to see people like chelsea memel um and like the german women's gymnastics team dutch women's gymnastics team having average ages of mid to late 20s um still competing at such a high level um it's showing us that um the previous stigma we kind of had against adults doing gymnastics um, is breaking down because adult bodies can still do a sport that is as tough on your body as gymnastics. And I think what we're going to be seeing is, you know, people when they're younger, maybe not throwing as many extremely difficult skills, maybe not doing 30 tumbling passes in one floor session to save your ankles. Um, Shift Movement Science, who um, is run by a physical therapist um, who ex whose expertise is in working with gymnasts is showing different things like weightlifting being beneficial to gymnast bodies as they're able to take on greater amounts of force, um, taking on negative and abusive coaching as well, um, and really revolutionizing the sport from kind of a bottom-up approach of when people are young, being able to develop themselves as athletes, as people, and really building the foundations. And I think when this comes to adult gymnastics, we're seeing more people being inspired to do the sport, to maybe build up some more strength and flexibility as well to kind of just protect their bodies as they head into trying to learn more difficult skills. But I think just Chelsea Memel, even guys like Sam McCulloch, who's going for his third Olympics, as I mentioned, German and Dutch Olympic teams. I think everybody really is truly being inspired and I hope that more gyms across the United States and across the world will be more welcoming to adult gymnastics as we're seeing that people of any age can pursue this sport if that's what they want to do. I would also completely agree with everything Ryan said and I think the shift towards more adult gymnastics has been a very very positive shift in terms of training, the shift in training, because I think adults, there's more of an expectation that you know your body and you know what you need out of the practice. You know how many reps you need to do. You know how your ankle feels. Like you're the one who's who's have, who's being able to feel like, oh, that was a little bit of a twinge. Like I'm going to stop doing things. You can kind of make those decisions for yourself. And I think that's a much healthier style of training is to be aware of what your body needs and how many reps you need and not to be over training or overworking yourself if that leads to injuries that you didn't actually need. Um, I think also, I just want to talk about, I think another thing that's positive about this kind of shift is changing the image of a gymnast from someone who has a very like prepubescent body, because I think that is something that within gymnastics, there is a lot of pressure um, on your body image and on how you should look and how you should be to train certain skills or to compete. Um, so I think having a shift in the image of a gymnast to being seeing more people who are stronger and more adults 
and having less of the pressure that you need a very specific body type in order to be doing the skills that you want to work on um, also has positive ramifications because I think gymnastics is a sport which can be like extremely conducive to developing eating disorders and that's something that I hope we also shift away from um, towards uh, a healthier mindset towards health and towards food. Um, and then finally, in terms of where it's going, I'm really hoping that there's more accessibility in terms of call, um, adult gymnastics and that there are more programs available, more gyms just offering them, um, and also that they're at convenient times that people can actually make. I think that's very key. Um, and also that we're having more programs that allow people to work on things that they're passionate about and have it be like a fun experience that you're doing as a source of exercise um, that's less strict. You know, if you don't want to do this certain skill, you don't have to, you don't have to train all the time. Um, you don't have to compete every event if you don't want to. Kind of just having more freedom and getting the positive elements of the sport um, in terms of physically and mentally and socially out without having as many, as many very strict rules or stresses or pressures that are placed upon you. Yeah, I completely agree with everything Ryan and Naomi said. I truly believe that adult gymnastics has a future in the sense that it really encourages people to pursue their passions and it's, a, it's an actual like, possibility we can see happening. So there are many programs like around the country that I've seen set up adult gymnastics, for example, like even summer camps or summer sessions. So adults don't have to feel like they have to commit immediately to the sport that maybe they're interested in, but not completely sure if they want to do yet. So um, I believe that having like better times and having more facilities and available coaches to teach adults and understand that adult bodies are inherently different to like a child is definitely important to the future of adult gymnastics. I also believe that the um, increased marketing or increased um, tele televising of college gymnastics, for example, like through UCLA, um, NCAA, they, they truly make gymnastics look much more fun and more of a team sport than it is as an individual sport. So I think it's super important to build up gymnastics as a community, not just for to practice to compete, then practice and compete, but also just to build, up, build it up as a community and a family with a social aspect and emotionally health, emotional health aspect, as well as as a like mental well-being or physical well-being as well. So I think definitely addressing all these aspects and integrating, to get, integrating them together into one program would be a good option for um, future growth. Yeah, I totally agree with all of that. One thing I would add is that I've actually been really astonished by how many adult gymnasts there are out there and how many adults already exist who have that passion and that willingness to learn gymnastics. I think that community has existed for a while. There just hasn't been as many avenues to connect all of those individuals. And maybe there hasn't been as much accessibility as Naomi uh, alluded to for people to practice. So as we expand programs and as more and more people are aware of these opportunities, I think it will continue to grow. Um, but it's just very encouraging and exciting to see even on that Facebook page or when you go to these or when you create a program and then new people from here and there and they tell their friends and all of a sudden there's all these people you've never met before who are like, oh, I've always wanted to do adult gymnastics. I just didn't know about a program. So there are people out there and interested and there are people actively looking. There are people who aren't actively looking, but maybe we'll see an opportunity as it arises. So I think as we continue to facilitate those possibilities and the programs in the classes, people will continue to join just like, you know, adults do recreational tennis or recreational soccer. Um, I, I do think there are a lot of people who would love to continue or even start doing gymnastics. So it's very exciting. Yeah, definitely. I, well, I just want to thank you all so much for joining me. This has been really fun and it went a lot, <laughs> a lot more smoothly than I thought. <laughs> Having four of you on together is super fun.